every state agency at this point in time in Kenya is all about generating revenue for sus uh, for sustainability and survival. Never filed taxes over 10 years ago. Just hope that KRA did is he, not watching. Did, did what? He, he said that loud. He said that loudly. Yeah. I, I, hope, I hope KRA is not tuned in because they will... <laughs>
is going to become very important. You know, as the African countries are starting to connect with each other, uh, integrating, and these trade agreements are coming to life, logistics in how goods move from one point to another within a country and outside a country is going to be very important. So I think uh, we're going to get you another day, you know, like in here to specifically talk about, you know, like uh, logistics and courier services in Kenya because it's one very complicated thing. Whenever I want to send something somewhere, uh, I, I tend to find that I, it, I, I need, I kind of need, you know, like someone who knows how to send parcels. You know, like if you want to send mm. a parcel from Nairobi to Mombasa or maybe Nairobi to Kisumu. Or Tahamid, whatever. Tahamid. Yeah. Easy so, coach. So, yeah. So, those are the things that, and then, you know, most people here are very Americanized. So, sometimes the questions that we go asking when we go back home leave people uh, shaking their heads. You know, you know, you can go like to G4S and send a package. But that's yeah, that's yeah, yes. that's what he uh, Hila was saying. Those yeah, are, that's what I'm saying. Like, members, like yes. if, if I want to send something like yeah. to to whatever to 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 Nairobi from Kilifi, yeah, I'll just go to there's a G4S carrier who apparently just the other day I think also UPS was also sort of added, but it's a, it's a, it's one one place. Then you write, you know, you you send. Let's say I'm sending to Ali. Yeah, this is the number. This is the this is the person. Whatever. Then kifika unapigiwa ikiwa ikiwa Nairobi unaenda unachukua. The complicated question is what if I want to send a parcel from Tana River to Marsabit? Same chap. Basi. Same, Basi. same chaps or yeah. you use yeah. Easy Coach or yeah. you take whatever buses go out there. They take parcels as well. Yeah. But that's, I see the complication. That, yes. that, that's, 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 that's not easy. <coughs> no, it's not. Tana River to Marsabit or to Wargadud. But chances are, yeah. they have already perfected the system. There's an ecosystem surviving in there. There's in a chap who, who moves from There's, that point. That's, yes. That person will ferry, whether they are official or unofficial, but they will ferry. Yes. Okay. Because goods right. need to move. Ah, yeah, sour, sour. We're going to talk about that later on, uh, but Stephen JJ is in the building. Karibu sana, Tabitha and Jerry. Welcome to the One Mike Show, Lineta Yuko. Thank you so much for tuning in. Washake says, Hillary amesema sio kujivunia kuwa mkenya. Sasa ni kupambana kuwa mkenya. I want to remind the listeners wow. that you tuned in to wow. the One Mike That's Show. somebody zooming in. <laughs> and I'm your co-host and producer, Ali Badawi. Our guest tonight, of course, is Hillary Teller, the board chair of Korea Industry Association of Kenya, CIAK. Now, Teller is also a former director of the Kenya Rugby Union, so keep it locked because he will be talking about the current state of Kenya rugby with Shuja being promoted back into the World Series. We'll shortly be asking him if it's a legal requirement for Kenyans living abroad to file taxes. So stay tuned for that. But before we continue, I can see Anthony Jiroge here has a comment. Uh, and Anthony Jiroge says, what's all this going on deactivating KRA pin number in Kenya? That's a question. We're going to talk about KRA pin numbers. So... Anthony Jiroge, very good question. We're going to be talking about that. But before we continue, Uno Mike, yes. there's something that will be happening in Wilmington, North Carolina yeah. on the weekend of June 21st to June the 23rd. Briefly tell us what's going to be happening. Meaning there. next weekend? Yeah, next weekend, in short. So briefly, what is going to be happening is there is going to be the uh, competition, mm -hmm. Kenya Exiles. So these are the former players, probably who used to be in, in the 254 and also guys who here who love rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, it's go, it's a competition that happens every year. Okay. It's called Cape Fear. Uh -huh. And now in Mexicamoto, I think, not because we were relegated, but it just so happened that, you know, we were relegated, but we came back. But now in Mexicamoto. To understudy vibes. This is to understudy vibes. Because yeah. we are yeah. Kenyans yeah. Who, uh, who, who previously played rugby okay. that yeah. are here mm -hmm. so it's gonna be and it's a competition okay teams are coming from all over yeah so it's gonna be career the person who put it together is a guy called benny fiongo mm -hmm. who i'm hoping is gonna be a surprise guest benny camera Tiongo. oh sure okay and then of course uh we've been lined up a very good uh, spectacular lineup by sistuki and shinsky so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun Okay. And I think uh, next year, if, you, if, if you're just hearing about it, next year, around this time, June, Cape Fear, Cape Fear, Wilmington, North Carolina. And there's water there, so you can carry your angodas. Yes, you can. It's right on the beach. When I go to Ambia, two years ago, I ended up going to Jereno, to Carolina, and I went to Kana. Saiwa, Saiwa, I want to die. 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 Even the two, but anyway, you know the funny thing is this: rugby by the beach. Even the lawyer couldn't rugby by the beach. When I talk about go, 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 go,
it's, it's, it's not no pressure rugby, right? Like even at the peak, there's that relaxation and you're having fun with the players and the terms because the players are people you know, are people you've seen. So you just show up. Wow. 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 There are activities that are centered around, like they're giving you time to go chill at the beach so you can come, you can turn it into a vacation, a family thing. Like, make sure you show up at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be some nice, fantastic rugby. We have some very good rugby players by the end of our team. You can come back. You can come club. You can see them in the picture. You'll be surprised how good they are. And then, you know who's playing at night? Those two DJs don't need any introduction, and all the people with good vibes are gonna be there. So if you wanna, if you're looking for a good time, it's summertime. You wanna be outside. Uh, that's a weekend for you. That's a weekend plan from Thursday to Monday. So you have four days to choose between which ones you want to come. Okay, but the official start is Friday, June twenty-first. Of course, you can arrive before on June the twentieth. Yes. Uh, and I have posted the link in the comment section uh, of the Facebook of where you can get the tickets uh, for the after parties mm -hmm. and then uh, also details about the tournament itself. The tournament yes. itself is free. Fif yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's free. So yeah. no, 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 no entry. No jumping fences. No, no jumping your fences. Yeah, I remember in Kenya, in Kenyans were very famous for jumping fences in, uh, in Las Vegas. Vegas. Yes. At some point, yeah. So here, no jumping fences. Don't start planning about how to jump a fence because it's free to go watch the tournament. I I'm glad Domoshi will not have to jump fences. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, the last people I saw jumping fences in Vegas were from Baltimore. I just want to put that story out. There. Okay, actual people from Baltimore. And we're actual not sure people we're from Baltimore. And I can point we're not them out. Names, but we're not we, naming no, names. No, I am not naming names. And they jumped fence, and it was not one or two. Well, I was say Kamaki and the ten. Okay, who was there guarding the fence? I was not guarding a fence. I was who was there? Who was, was there directing people out? I was a chap who was outside the venue, <laughs> jumping the fence. Zero <laughs> chance. <laughs> Okay, all right, sawa sawa. Now, so. bimo ujijua. All right, so sawa sawa. So that's going to be Cape Fear 7s. You know, make sure you get your tickets ready. Uh, now, I think we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go back to Hila. Uh, and we want to start this at the most basic uh, level. Um, at a level that involves everyone in the diaspora. And Hila, this is sending money back home, a.k.a. remittances. Most, as far as most of us know, money sending apps do not charge us fees we just send money and people receive it on the other side now how are remittances getting impacted by the finance bill of 2024 hila thank you so the proposal that they have on the table right now is to introduce a tax that uh, will require 0.5 percent of the value of anything that is remitted back into kenya to be taxed and that is for both incoming that's inflow and outflow um, and, you know, I think one of the biggest issues that uh, I think they're trying to try and resolve, but they may not necessarily have done it the right way, is to try and ensure that if anyone brings in any cash, it is retained and it circulates within the Kenyan uh, system. So take an example. If today you have a million or rather you have a project that you need to execute and it's about $10 million. So if you perhaps decided that you'll go around and ensure that you'll they deliver that money for the project in five batches of two million dollars each and every one of those particular batches will attract a 0 0.5 percent so for the first two million dollars there will be ten thousand dollars that will actually be charged as tax and subsequently up until you finish all those five transactions so you can then imagine even before you've actually finished a project and you have had a chance to go around and execute anything. You've had a tax of $10,000 multiplied by five, which is $50,000. That is not even, you know, any profit in itself. Now, if at some point in time, you were to then uh, say, say for example, you're building a resort. If after two years, you want to then go around and sell that particular resort and you spent $10 million and you're going to go around and get uh, $15 million for uh, as, 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 as what you'll actually sell the property for. The five million, on top of the initial cost of ten million, will now then go around and uh, get another tax, which is capital gains tax, which has then been moved from ten percent to fifteen percent. So for that five million that you have made, 
there'll be 15 percent of it that you have to give back to uh, the taxman and if you want to then repatriate that money back home on the 15 million you'll still get another 0 0.5 percent so i think the end game is to try and ensure that any for, uh, foreign currency that gets into kenya stays and circulates within there is it necessarily the right thing to do of course we've been struggling uh, particularly in the last 12 months with a runaway dollar really devaluing the kenyan shillings but the one thing that this particular proposal risks is just uh, it, it, it contravenes a free market enterprise because i should have the freedom to put in my one million dollars today if i don't think it's not working in for me i need to be take it to uganda or south africa etc the end game is to actually make it punitive or painful for someone to consider repatriating money out once it's already coming so as it comes in 0 0.5 percent as it comes out 0 0.5 percent if there's actually any residual value that has been gained the differential of that value gets 15 percent capital gain so um it still has not been confirmed they still um, have until the 30th of june to consider whether that is the right way to do uh, deal with it but for organizations particularly multinationals who are looking at you know repatriating funds and being able to uh, ensure that there's equity that in itself will be a point of concern um it is not necessarily in line with also all the shuttle diplomacy that the government of kenya has been doing in the u.s in korea i think uh, the president is headed to italy uh sometime uh he's already there the he's roaming he's, already in italy. he's roaming yes. roaming roaming he's yes. roaming Rome, it, so, roaming so as we are on a charm offensive what we're not telling the fellows is that as you actually bring in that money will actually penalize you for getting it out of the economy um and i think that's the end game the end game is yes to actually get the investment but to retain as much dollar liquidity in the country as possible so, so uh Hila, i have a question for you on that you know you raised something about multinationals so for instance let's take uh an organization that currently is doing uh what i would call ngo type of work uh and there is a service that they are providing and because they are not for profit what they normally would do is they would go out to sponsors or to people to give grants and so on and so forth so let's say they're working on uh providing i don't know i'll just say housing for people in kibera and that project you know is a 10 million dollar project like you have said so they source for the money they're given money from overseas the money comes in but as the money comes in you're saying that they would be charged the uh what is it 0.5 percent and then uh, if there's any gains from that particular project say that project then now is turned around and sold and uh, our uh, housing projects that we are selling now then they would then get a uh, capital gains tax of 15 percent on that particular property that is correct in its current state of play they have not been able to go and demarcate if there'll be any waivers on any organization what they've actually set as a baseline is anyone who remits foreign currency into kenya will be taxed at 0.5 percent that's a proposal that's on the table so it's basically to try and keep it within the family and they're not doing it um, uh, with, with the intentions of getting it done voluntarily <laughs> but they're making it painful so so that's very punitive for folks who are actually providing a service especially for our NG the ngos that come into kenya to provide services uh like and i'm just saying like your usaids your oxfams your you know and i was going to say red cross world education whatever those folks who actually are working projects or doing something it it seems like you're pushing these guys out or they would need to find a different way to channel their money in maybe work via tz or something so i know for a fact most of uh, the international aid agencies particularly the ones linked to governments would would have the disbursements of the funds in the operating countries so say for example example you said you said is an appendage of the u.s government correct for all the projects that they have in kenya they have an office in here so the money will actually be sent in from the u.s to the usa office and then disbursed in kenya now whether each and every particular disbursement including any disbursement that is done from one sovereign country to the other will will be will attract that 0.5 percent the jury is still out there but as it stands right now anything that is not kenya shillings coming in will attract 0 0.5 percent in the current proposal so sisi watu wa diaspora tukai tungu muna pesa zetu basically ama mwanza kubeba pesa kwa rugsacks you get back into the 80s that's 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 what well, that's what's gonna start happening you know like there's actually a couple of people who've been telling me that that's what they're gonna start doing you know like when someone is going to kwa 1000 pelekea mama yangu 
chukua 500 pelekea fulani au chukua 1000 endo ka deposit kwa account yangu cuz when it's in the country as cash then you can do it and of course you already so, know it's illegal to i think travel i think you have to declare if you're traveling with more than 10000 dollars you, yes. yes. yeah, you have to declare yes yeah you have to declare so i think it's important for people to know that for those is the 10000 the us or the 10000 is kenya no, 10000 the, the 10000 is the us i don't know about getting into kenya but $10,000 is the US if you're Correct. exiting the air any any US airport with mm -hmm. more than $10,000 in cash, in cash yes. you need to declare so i think that's important for people to note man that this th so uh, so am i to assume as well that if we are sending money via our uh, these money wallets or e wallets which are basically yeah. coming across cuz it's originating as a dollar but then it in gears so I, is that going to be taxed yes yes, yes yes because i think what Inachapwa. people what people don't realize about uh this money sending services they uh -huh. tell you that uh it's, it's free. free that's what they say they do but, a but, rate. but, but, but a here's rate. the thing there's a differential between the actual rate and the rate at which uh they're, they're giving it to you so this rate now it's gonna become bigger if it was three shillings it's gonna become five shillings i just did you know like some calculations um you know like maybe if it if if it cost you let's say 750 to send 100k i'm just saying for example it might now cost you 770 to send the same 100k so we will be forking out more money from our bank accounts to send money to kenya so i think that's an important uh it's an important element for people to know and people pay attention not to the exchange rate that the apps are giving you but to the actual exchange rate that the market is offering because remember even when the mobile wallet is receiving in kenya correct uh mpesa there's, they a fee, there's a fee that they charge yes. there's a fee that they charge the transaction they, fee, when yes. they they will receive it but when yes. they remove it there's a there's transaction a, there's, fee. there's a transaction fee yes for yeah. whoever yeah for and that, that is, person's wallet yes. yes i mean it it so technically the what 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 the proposal was is if i send ali money mm -hmm. me na cha, na, i'm hit correct yeah ali aki ikimfikia akienda kutoa is hit is hit and, and a hit so yes. uh, so, the, so there's an increment but, but you know the thing twice. is yeah. he's he being hit for tax yeah. as well yes. as the rate that for that is Safcom the proposal because because what this is what's are going to happen uh, initially it was let's say let's say 15% initially so if i'm sending because if you if you've noticed when you're sending if you send 100 bob unambi wa po 27 shillings whatever it is yeah, yeah, there's, a, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a fee depending on yeah, the one yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, sending yeah. Yeah. yes so that one is gonna go up that's gonna go up yes that one is gonna go up but ni sequel to diaspora where we don't see fees but we won't see us we won't see it. and we think that uh, no 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 yeah. th we're gonna get hit yeah and that is going to prop is good it's definitely it's going, to affect, the going to affect the rate, rate the exchange the rate, calcu oh, exchange yeah, yeah, rate yeah. calculation it will be will, will be, be yeah. okay of course that one will be hit so so what costed you one thousand dollars before is now gonna be like a thousand and fifty or yes. something of that sort. what yeah a couple of comments coming in here um uh Afro Jamaican says uh, this is not good, uh, and I also want to welcome uh, Udi Madenge is tuned in. Karibu sana. DJ Sunny Sistuki is in the building. Uh, gonna be there for Cape Fear Sevens. Uh, and then uh, there was a question here that was coming from uh, from Anthony Joroge who said uh, never file taxes Kenya and the rumors probably O K R A. Uh, and then Afro Jamaican says. You're Kenyan, so they can't refuse you. They can always tell me to leave. So I filed. Also, oh, Afro Jamaican is following all the rules. Uh, yeah, he's he's I guess he filed either nil or he filed yeah. whatever. You can he file earned. nil. Yeah, yeah you can and, file and we're going to talk about those nil returns. Washeke says the 0.5% is very punitive. It means people will avoid Kenya as an investment destination. And then I can see Mimo Kwenange Karibu Sana. Uh, Udi Madenge says, is he justifying over taxation? Uh, Udi Madenge, tell us who he is. Uh, are you talking about? He, uh, he is the Hillary who brought the news. Okay. And then uh, Washeke says, uh, there are better ways to entice investors to keep their money in Kenya than what the government is proposing. Uh, and Afro Jamaican says, so if I so so it if I send shillings, it's not taxed. Uh, I think we established that that differential is where you know the money transfer service is paying the fee, but they're taking it away from that. No, no, that, that is wrong. That is wrong. 
uh, Ali, because the tax is also going to affect uh, the, when, they, when they come to money services, they just not ta- taxi, uh, taxing the foreign exchange that's coming in. The tax is going to affect bank payments in Kenya. So basically, those people who used to go, like, I would tell you that going to Kenya while you swap your card is the cheapest way for you to use your money. You get the best value for your dollar. But now the thing, because Kenyan vendors don't charge you any fees, the fees, they don't put the fees on the customers, it's them who take those fees. It's going to get to a point now with this new tax, whereby they're going to have to tax because it's, the others will be going on losses. They'll be paying for too much help with that. So, and then another thing is also m charges between in Kenya are going to get taxed. So that service is going to get expensive. The fee is going to get higher. Yes. So it's not just affecting people who are sending dollars. But I, I think that you, you go with Kenyan money and you send shillings is cheaper. All in all, is electronic money transfer in Kenya is going to get expensive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in the fatigable Asante Sana Mika for that... Uh, uh, for that correction and then in the fatigue and jerry says kenya requires you to declare anything above five thousand dollars uh and then Anton Anton oh, says okay. this bottom-up manifesto turning into an ugly thing washeke uh is telling afro jamaican it's still taxed because money transfer via mpesa even within kenya is going to be taxed uh, and then udi says those clowns are stealing how come we don't pay for cash up fees um, and then uh, I can see Udi says there, file taxes, file nil. We're going to be talking about that. And then Udi Father says, I have noticed the tax has already been applied. Check your Kenyan bank statement. It's being done undercover. Yes, I mean, those those excise fees, I've always been seeing them, you know, like in my Kenyan uh, bank statement. So now coming back here to the U.S., Uno Mike. Yeah. While we're planning for this episode, you asked me a question that got me thinking regarding the correlation between taxes in Kenya and people in the diaspora. Because the only taxes we worried about previously in the diaspora for a long time were IRS taxes. Yes. No one ever used to talk about Kenyan taxes. Mm -hmm. But now it's become a topic of conversation. When you talk to people maybe like in Baltimore, what's their understanding about paying taxes to Kenya while living here? Do people... Are people getting it that uh, now they're supposed to be paying taxes? I'll say this. The people that I know who own property Mm -hmm. or who have got a building or Mm -hmm. their their rental apartments or whatever, they are being, they are getting, they are getting notices. They've been getting notices. Where? Yes. I'm talking about somebody who is here. I know somebody who had to fly to Kenya because you 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 receive a, a letter from KRA. Because what these guys do, they come, they're like, eh, who, 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 who. Ah, they, they talk they, to soldier. They talk to soldier, or they talk to somebody. They be like, so so low tech, low tech. Yeah, they just yeah. come in and they say at the uh, yeah, yeah. And so, then you say yes, uh, okay, nigani, uh, and now okay, now when you you go happy, ah, we you come ambo. There are people who have received letters. And then you're being but told. You, you, then, you, know, you know, you cannot, you cannot own a house without, uh, without, without a pin. having, yeah, without you, having a pin. They, 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 they don't even, they don't, they don't go to soldiers. Yeah, like but in Kenya, you buy a house, your details yeah. are there. Uh, uh, yeah, you know but, but, but but what I'm trying to say here, Mika, is how would they know do some of those that information? They would have to f- do, they'd have to do the drive by. Oh, correct. Yeah, no, but then what I'm trying to say is that how do they know that I'm living there or not? Well, there are various ways they can go and get that information. Well, well, yeah, I like remember, it. remember, even when before you did the construction, you needed to get a couple of permits and you filed in your document, either by a company with its PIN or as an individual with a PIN. Correct. So the low hanging fruit is to go to the lands office or the fellows mm-hmm. who give the county approvals and just get that data and try and confirm if any of those particular properties have been occupied and if they have been occupied whether it's the owner who's in it or someone who's renting it and okay. after that it just becomes a snowball effect each and every six months i think Kerry has been getting close to about between 500 and 700 um, enforcement officers who are now being taken uh, to the military council paramilitary training because there's been some very nasty incidents that have happened in the last couple of years when they go around and ask uh, for fellows to pay up taxes, some of them have lost their lives in that line of duty. So then they're going wow. paramilitary duty. And late last year, it was actually quite interesting. Um, in November, I, 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 had, I had traveled out of the country. So my younger brother was uh, at my farm in Busia. 
The enforcement officers came in through and they said, fine, what is the land holding in here? He gave the acreage. Who owns the land? Uh, it's my brother. What does he do? So they could see a couple of avocado trees in there, close to about 300 of them. And, uh, you know, they could see a couple of cows, etc. So they asked for an entire inventory. So if you say you've got four cows, they'll write it down. And they'll assume, and, and they'll assume that if only 50% of your cows give you at least 10, 10 liters of milk uh -huh. in a day, that's uh, 10 liters multiplied by 30 days. That is 300 liters. A liter is 50 shillings. That's 15,000 shillings. They'll anticipate that. At the point in time that will affect some of these requirements of taxing farmers with the eatings, We'll expect at the very least that this guy will be earning 15,000 from the milk, and as such, 16% of that should be at least 1,300, 1,400, and so on and so forth. At the point in time, his avocados go around and start fruiting. Each and every tree will give X amount. So they place that as estimates. Like they've gone very aggressive on even trying to actually understand how to move on through. And I'm talking about a, a, a farm in the village in Busia, not in Busia town, like deep in the village. So trust me, they've got enough enforcement officers whose only work is to go around and collect the data and also follow through on the payment. So they become very aggressive, and, very aggressive. And, and, and like, so these guys in Balti, the, 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 the people who know are the ones who receive letters because, and I think like Indefatigable in, in is saying over there, Hash has been paying taxes since 2018. Yeah. But over there, guys, what's happening is you get a letter and you're given seven days to respond, to come to the office to sort out these manenos. And then you're told your tax bill or whatever because they they count. So it's like it's like they they backdate. They go backwards. Yes. They go backwards from when Correct. they can say so from 2019 to 2022 or 2023, and you've got five career. So you are, you're liable to pay tax of let's say 300,000 Kenya shillings. So it's up to you to now it's come back and prove them wrong. And yes. Prove them wrong. Yeah. The now, is, proof is on you. Yes. Okay. Now, now Kicheza. somebody. Yeah, yeah, we leave it to. So that's what I'm saying. So, like, so, so what's happening is those are the people who who know who who are, who, in know. who are in the know. There are people who just don't know that you need to you need to have a pin. Now, now here here's my question here yeah. when we talk about pin numbers because yes. now there's a couple of things that have been mentioned pin yes e teams uh, and a lot of people in diaspora yeah we, we sitting here may know what those are yes but I think I want so, you to talk about yeah, those because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do not understand what these things are, and uh, Hila, on the, on those on your kit, your items na pin. First of all, we want to know is filing taxes a requirement for all Kenyans, including those who live abroad and have never worked in Kenya, do not own any property in Kenya. Is it a legal requirement for for everyone to file taxes? Meaning, even kids who are born here, but now with dual citizenship. They have a Kenyan passport. Are all these people required to file for taxes? Hila. So the, the answer is in the affirmative. One of the key things is once you already obtain a national ID, even if you're in university, you're required to get a PIN because it's the one document that will even enable you to open an account when you're in college, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Now, if you are not employed and uh, you don't have any business, at the time of filing, you should be able to go around and file in meal returns. If you do not file by the 30th of June each and every single year, there will be a fine. I think the number is a ballpark number of about 15,000 because they say, I mean, if you really don't have any income, why would you want to avoid filing in the first place? Just file and say that those zero. If you do not file, then the assumption is that you're trying to evade the system. And you could actually be out of the country for about three or four years. But the moment you come back in and they ask you to go around and, uh, and, and you're looking at opening a bank account, Remember, we've been there for five years. So there's been 15,000 accruing interest. 75. That by five, that's 75,000 plus interest. It'll probably be about 110,000. You we'll open your account. The moment your account is open, because they'll have actually placed some of those particular pins on a watch list, the moment you do your first transaction into that account, they will lock it. Then they'll tell you, please come and visit us to one of our care offices. We have a discussion. Care so they'll ask you, so we've been there for five years. You've now deposited 200,000 shillings. You can't access it. Let us understand. What happened? So at that time, you could negotiate. You could genuinely have uh, not been in the country. You were paying tax in a different place. The last you'd go around and confirm onto that, and then you can negotiate on what the penalty would be. But the, the bottom line of the point I'm trying to make is that you need to file every 30th of June. Yes. By the 30th of June. By the 30th of yes. June. You file nil. 
So this yes. is, this includes kids who are born no, in no, the no, US. No, 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 no. If you're 18 and over. Yeah. Yes. But, but yes, I'm yes, saying kids yes. are born in the US. And yes. you have dual so citizenship. Yes. And over yes. Yes. have dual citizenship. Yes. So, yes. Uh, so I think this is this is very critical because a lot of people, 90% of the people, people who've been living here for 20, 25 years, they don't know. So you've not been filing taxes. So I think the moment they get a hold of you is multiplying whatever they think you owe or those penalties, they multiply them by 20 or by 25. Uh, so let's say like if you owe... Let's say they estimate that uh, your penalties are, I don't know how much, let's say like 10,000 shillings every year. Multiply that by 25, that is 250,000 shillings. Yes. Uh, and you know, you know, yes, Mika. You know, the good thing about it is that they're really, the one thing is they work with diaspora people. And that is, I will tell people in the diaspora, don't be scared to file nail, especially if you have ambition to do three things. You have ambition to buy land. You have ambition to get a business, like start a business the way we want to open an Airbnb or any other business. Or you have ambition, you want to go back home and you want to ship stuff, like you want to ship like a container, the way that container they give you for free that's tax free. Or you want to bring in a car. If you want to do those things, just keep filing me because it's going to help you at the end of the day. Okay, no. I'm going to okay. read a couple of comments. Uh, when Jerry is saying I've been paying taxes in Kenya since 2018 because the drama is real, uh, those guys look at who filed for the electricity and water meters. Very easy to trace back. Uh, Tabitha and Jerry is saying, whoa, she's surprised. Uh, Tabitha, have you filed your taxes? Uh, um, where, but now why are you uh, picking on Tabitha? Bana? Now, I, I hope KRA is not tuned in because shortly you'll see <laughs> <laughs> KRA but, joined. But there are very many Tabitha and uh, Jerry's. Mm -hmm. Shortly you'll see KRA joined. And then uh, Udi says, uh, nice point, Ali, you need to file returns. Uh, Udi says, we got exemption. As long as you file the NIL returns from 2015. 2015. Well, why is the 2015 year That's important? That's when I think they started. Okay. That's what they implemented. They implemented, they implemented okay. The, okay. the career. Yeah. Okay, good to know, good to know. And then um, let me see. Uh, Afro-Jamaican is saying only if they have a PIN. Sunny says to keep Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Afro-Jamaican. Sunny's records are going to be fine. is saying the nil return takes less than five minutes. Uh, Washeke is saying Kiare is watching. And uh, Sistuki, alikuwa nasema pa omosh amepatikana. Memtoa Atlanta. Now let me let me let me read something that that, yeah, that was shared in a, in a different group and yeah, this from an tent. accountant in Kenya <laughs> and I think Komosh is part of mm. that group. The yeah. guy said it is important for uh, for those who have or intend to own any property, start a business, get married or plan to settle in Kenya to have a pin and align your taxes as per current tax laws. Your properties will not it be seized irrespective of when you acquired it, but align with both countries tax authorities, IRS and KRA, especially IRS. I say IRS because they are more lethal and difficult to cut corners. As for KRA, you can clean up and in quotes, organize your tax history. Wink, wink. In other news, IRS has now set a desk, has now set up a desk at C with CBK to require banks to give them information on US citizens with accounts in Kenya. They have collected all your data that you use to send money here. Waves, LTC, whatever. This has been necessitated by the increase of fraud cases by our brothers in West Africa. This is being done across Africa. FATKA, F-A-T-K-A, uh, in action. So if you can, just please get a pin, clean up your tax history, and remember to file year on year. That okay. is from a tax expert. In a and then, you know, the thing is this. The IRS usually doesn't even... Uh they don't even really follow. I'll tell you somebody who does business in both countries. Uh, the IRS doesn't really follow you so much, especially if you're not moving money back to, to from the states to here. So the IRS will never look into that that much unless you are like you're making a major major income that you're bringing in. So and it protects you also in the fact that moving money is one of the most dangerous things you can do in this country. And I can be your relative back home, and I ask you for money, only to me or any support. And maybe I'm radicalized by some groups out there. And if you don't have a money trail that supports, that shows you're supporting that person, you're just sending money. You can easily be get gotten with charges of funding a terrorist organization. So that paper trail is also safe for you. 
Mika, why are you, sta- why are you scaring us, Bana? You know, we were... No, we, we, no we, I'm we, just saying something things. to consider. Like, we no, were doing uh, things in a good way, Bwana. <laughs> something to consider when you're doing this. So it's not a bad thing. Filing nil. All I'm saying is I'm encouraging people. File the nil returns. File just the file nil returns. Nil. Have okay. a paper trail. Like, make it easy that when... It, you never know who you're dealing with. So who you're working with, like just protect yourself in any way you can. So 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 going back to Hila, what's gonna happen to me like if if I haven't uh if I haven't filed for since 2015? Uh, what happens to me if I go to KRA and tell them so, okay I want to call the best thing the best thing you would do because you already know what the issue is is you basically go to the office and um, preempt it and tell them I've been away I've not been domiciled in Kenya. Yeah. I have been earning revenue and paying taxes in the foreign country. They would not request you or require to do the double taxation. Okay. You will just have to go around and update your record. But because the filing system can only be done in a year by year front, you will definitely have to go and work around with them. They may decide pegged up on the story or the version that you give them to either do a waiver or just give you a small fine, depending on what you told them. And what is a if small fine? Tell us, they, they usually charge you an administration fee for just yes. doing it, if you're, if yes. you're backing it up. What, yes. what is a small fine, Hila? What, what, what are we talking about? What's a small fine? Um, they could actually decide to just ex gratia give you the penalty for one year and then have that expunge from the record. That I know is what most of the guys who couldn't get out of it would get. At least if you did five or six years, they'll just say fine uh, because you, you, you had also vanished. It's first and foremost good that you actually came by. So they could, I mean, it's, 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 it's a decision that they'll go around and make pegged upon the balance of what you're telling them. But Hila, right now there's a tax amnesty up to June 30th and they're encouraging folks who have not been filing or who had not filed to come out of the woodworks, file nil and basically uh, go through this process. So, it's, so um, amnesties, amnesties, amnesties are not necessarily grounded uh, in practice. It's basically meant to be out of the goodwill of your heart. But if you're to go around and follow the the rules in a very strict way, right. a fine should be forthcoming. And Amnesty just says, okay, you guys have been naughty fellows. We want to give you a chance to get back uh, onto the mainstream. So we'll just give you this chance, this window. Then if you do not utilize it, then we'll come out for you. Correct. So, so what I'm trying to say is that they are actually saying they have an amnesty in relation to all those Izovituza Zile Yakale. So come out now and do it uh, and as you said once the 30th hits then all bets are off kabisa jitume mapema send yourself early so mtu kama one mic ambaye ako na property kama sita hivi na amekuwa kidoja hawa say for the last 16 years <laughs> eh akijitoa sasa hii na wanamngoja pale amengedia si hapo sasa ni kujipeleka sasa wewe sure now on properties but properties na ndo na sema tu uko unajua properties now even get a bit more murky because um, say for example you have a parcel of land in Kwale and another parcel of land in Nyeri what you then require to do on top of trying to sort out your KRE issues is to go to those respective counties and confirm that you are not on a defaulters list because eventually after a period of time when you've not gone around and paid your, 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 your rates land, and, uh, your, your your land, rates. land rates are land rent Precisely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, land rates give, get 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 even more dicey, yeah? correct? Because they can decide to deregister your lease and reallocate your land to someone else. Wow. So that, I mean, that one, yeah. That so one, so uh, one Mike's property can go to Humphrey instead of them staying with one Mike. If you do not pay, if you do not pay your your, your rates, huh, but past a certain period in time, then they actually wonder should we really keep this person, particularly if it's in a commercially viable area? Yes. Why are we keeping this guy? Because the counties are all also about generating revenue. Every state agency at this point in time in Kenya is all about generating revenue for sus- uh, for sustainability and survival. Okay. All right. Now, here here's here's my other question. A couple of comments here I want to read, but before I read uh, the questions, you mentioned something called ETIMS, you know, which is something that we hear constantly in the media. What exactly is ETIMS? ETIMS simply talks to us an electronics tax uh, management system. It's uh, it's basically, so think about a PDQ machine. So what they're trying to do is that they notice that there's a lot of activity happening within the informal sector. In agriculture, you know, your typical sort of nyamachoma stalls that you get at um, a Kenyatta market, your typical uh, estate hair salon. So they're saying for some of these people who are then indulging in own private ventures. 
whether they are medium, small, or micro, they will be required to go around and register their businesses and get an electronic tax register. So simply put on a summer, if uh, Omosh is going to make his hair and it's going to cost him a thousand shillings, as soon as he's done, the person who is a loanist will charge him a thousand shillings. But then at that point in time, uh, acknowledge that uh, she received the money, it will be 16% VAT, and by the 20th of every month, be required to submit the 16% that she has collected on behalf of our great nation of Kenya to the Kenya Revenue Authority. All they're trying to do is to expand the tax bracket because previously it was only fellows who are salaried who would get into that. So they're trying to cast the net out wide. The one that is a bit uh, controversial is when they try to roll out that eating solution to farmers because farmers came around and said, so you expect me to go around and collect 10 bags of potatoes. I'll tell you a bag of potatoes about 4,000 shillings multiplied by 10, that is 40,000 shillings. You expect me 10% of this by the time I'm leaving the farm yet i'm not getting any subsidy on fertilizer i'm not getting any subsidy on any farm input i'm not getting any waiver on the labor costs that i'm actually placing in etc so the question then would be why would you come around and uh, you know uh, harm us is there a, an inflection point where we we'll say below a certain threshold of farming which would be considered subsidy uh, sub uh, uh, subsidiary farming will not go around and touch so it's 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 it's, it's all up in there so all they're trying to do is to expand the net and allow you to go around and self-evaluate yourself if they then come to your business and realize you're generating uh, financial activity and uh, you've not done it another fine will come through so you just go and get the machine so so, so the e is it. so so basically what you're saying is that e is mandatory however if let's say i went and i got the machine and i'm registered lakini watu wananlipa a different way then those sales don't register you must have systems to show that if you said in your Kinyozi, you collected 20,000, that you either have the M-Pesa to go around and support onto that, and you log in the right detail. Because of course, I mean, there are very many businesses, but you never know, uh, and I'm not trying to be biblical, no one knows the day is coming. So these guys don't know the day they're coming. If they basically go around and get one thing that is off from what you're, you're doing on your self uh, declaration, then it becomes an inquest. So it's about just having the right processes, whether it is actually cash or whatever the case would be, to ensure that as soon as the service has been issued, you issue them a receipt. Now here is where it becomes a bit interesting. You know, you may probably not think that uh, they'll come in disguised as customers because they could actually come in disguise themselves as customers, get a haircut, and after that, <laughs> after they've paid, they'll wait and see if you're giving them something. And the moment you don't give them, they tell you, not from Kerry. <laughs> Now let us understand. Uh, so how do you conduct your business? Wapiri yes. city. Okay. And it, it it so happened, you know. Again, Balti, you mm -hmm. know, uh, speaking from experience, you know, uh, Babahanya, the mother. This Babahanya guy. No, no, th that one we are sorting. Mother has got an avo avocado, whatever. You know how she's got so many avocados. So if somebody comes and buys, it's sort of a requirement to provide a receipt. Mm -hmm. It's sort of what it is. It is. It is a requirement. Correct. That is where the e teams is. So if uh -huh. you're doing business to business, yes. and I want to, uh, you know, like if I want, I want to get a receipt so that I can claim. Ta you know, like how if if you're doing business, you get, uh -huh. a, you go, you do business or whatever, you get a receipt so that you can claim. It's more or less the same thing. Yes. If, you're, if you're having a business now, Mama Boga, there's a requirement for even Mama to Boga to produce a receipt. Yeah, yes. to produce. Yes. So you, like, so Ali, Mimi ni Mama Boga. I'm over there. You come. You're, I'm, I'm, you're coming to, so you can get, you know, maybe one or two sticks of kere of, of, of kunde or whatever. Yeah. Unaenda kupika hapa kwa hotel yako. Uh, I'll like, be like, boss, I need a receipt. You'll tell me I need a receipt. So I have to give you a receipt. And I have to confirm with the pin, okay, this is Alibadawi's Mujuku's cafe. Yeah. And then you're, you got you got from, you know, one Mike's uh, store. That's it. That's it. But you have to. Okay. Business-wise. All right. My friend. All right. and, then no this, and then now this means it's paper and there's also a tax for paper now called CG Eko CG Nani. Right. You have to Which uh, are, because Okay, so, so let me let me go through some comments ah, yeah. here because <laughs> man, these have been coming thick and fast. Anthony Jorge is asking, uh I have a rental apartment, you will be paying taxes from income earned. Uh and we're gonna be talking about rentals later on. Mm. So stay tuned up or until uh, and then Onyango says, I think the FATCA reporting requirement is triggered by the amount of money you hold in foreign accounts. I believe it was uh, 50,000 US dollars the last time I checked uh, a few months ago. Uh, and then uh, 
Benny Diongo. I think it's less than 50,000. I'm, I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but let's just check that FATCA requirement of uh, amount of money that you're holding in an account abroad because there was a time when uh, when NCBA sent me something uh, which I thought that they had not seen, but they did send me something. Uh, and then Benny Diongo says, do you have to go in person? We have less than a month to handle this year's tax. Otherwise, it's past due. It's not less than a month. It is two weeks. Two it is. It is. It well, is because two, Benny two, two is counting Cape Fear, days. it's a week. He's counting Cape Fear now. Then that's one week. Yes. So yeah. for Benny, he's counting Cape Fear. So between now and Cape Fear, Apple eyes if any. Yeah. Anything. And then uh, Anthony Droge says, "I have never filed taxes over ten years ago. Just hope that KRA did is he, not watching." Did, did what? He said that loud. Now undo He said that loudly. Undo yeah. I, I, ho I hope KRA is not tuned in because they will be contacting you. I think uh, he needs to come to our school of finance. And then uh, Udi says, uh, "I got amnesty for one year." You need to settle it before government messes messes you on July first, and then Washeke says uh, for FATCA reporting requirements, it's fifty thousand at the end of the year, or seventy five thousand for single filers, hundred thousand at the end of or one f oh wow at any point during the year for married filers. I think this is something that people need to go. You know, like uh, we we need to look in detail those FATCA requirements. <laughs> and then Udia uh, Nasema, eTeams is is a hub to use for diaspora. It's a file that you need to download, and it's hard for someone to fill out. Um, Afro Jamaican says, use Odo as a POS. It's free. Uh, I don't know what Odo is. Uh, Afro Jamaican, please uh, give us some details. And then Luis Muya. It's, a, it's a CRM or a, a, a way you can actually manage your business. Oh, okay, a CRM. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. And then Tabitha Njeri here is saying this is all mind blowing. The guest is very informative, too. By the way, he's from the Congress of Highly Advanced National <laughs> Entertainment Zone aka changes but anyway that's a story for another day i want to remind the listeners that you tuned into the one mic show i'm your co-host ali badawi and our guest tonight is hillary itella from the lenana school he's the board chair of the courier industry association of kenya ciak now itella is also a former director of the kenya rugby union so keep it locked because we'll be talking about the current state of kenya rugby with shuja being promoted back to the world series we'll shortly be asking if it's worth investing in kenya with all these new taxes. Now, this is talking about diasporas. But before we continue, Uno Mike, mm -hmm. there's something big happening in Wilmington, North Carolina, on the weekend uh, of June 21st to 23rd. And also reminding the listeners, the number to call is 202-683-4570. Yes. Press star 5 to speak. I know there's a couple of people who are going to be going to North Carolina next yes, weekend, yes, yes, yes. who want to call. Uh -huh. uh, the number again, 202-683-4570, press star 5 to speak. But Uno Mike, tell us uh, for a minute what's going to be happening in NC. So we're going to be having uh, a tournament called Cape Fear that has been going on for over 50, for about 50 years. I didn't even know that myself. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. 50 years, yeah. Uh, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll even do you one better. I am trying to get the organizer on the line. Okay. He'll tell us more. Two zero two six eight three five seven zero. Yes. How do you take disrespect like that? Disrespect. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh. Ah, relax. You, you how? How? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> It's okay, boss. I, I, yeah. This is a sideback conversation. It sounds like ah, yeah. a sideback uh, conversation. Uh, uh, yeah. This is a sideback conversation. I mean, I mean, see the colors. He's even dressed in maroon. You know, like, uh, I mean, he up on on any tabitha mesema. You know, like uh, no, 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 no,
He's not gonna be wearing Former a thing Kenya on his one. head. So, so how many ca- how many Kenyan people? teams? How many Kenyan So there are two. Are there's, the, there's, the, there's, yeah. there's the there's the there's main a guy. Yeah. There's an A and a B. The B is okay. now for the Wazers, the old the, the guys who used to be or the legends. The legends. The legends. Yeah. Yeah. Kinabari, Ahenda, Lika, Waliovuma, Waliovuma. Yeah. But yeah. now he's not ni wasaza wile akina Mika Mika is gonna play by the way women are probably a good two minutes on the wing Wagura even Benny himself Wagura V Lenana School is Misha 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 will be playing Saints guy you see something I'm only quite strut sorry so Dennis Wesonga Dennis Wesonga easy double I don't know if he's I don't know if he's, he's double is playing, but the other guys, guys even there, okay. Akina Leslie probably will be will be there. I'm not sure, okay. But okay. we'll just find guys over there. Okay. But and will will there be you know like any Sherehe? Oh, there'll be Sherehe like with the, with the one and only Sunny Sistuki and DJ Shinsky. Okay. You mean double S? The, those ones. Okay. okay. It, it, and that's gonna be next week, Mr. Good Vibes from Friday, June twenty first. So we're well, from Thursday. So Thursday, ni Karibu night. Karibu night. E, unakuja, unakuja ukingia. Unakuja. Friday. Sato and then games, Hanye Bees. Games, Hanye Bees, and then final Sunday, then guys can go to the beach and there's gonna be after party. Okay, I've yes. pin, pinned the details, you yes. know, for those who wanna get, get in tickets. there. The and games, the games are free. No, no, no kuruka fence. Yeah. yeah. So Benny Thiongo, prepare yourself because so, when we when we when we delve into Cape Fear and rugby and KRE and Shuja. Oh sorry, did I say KRE? I'm traumatized. Uh, Cape Fear K-K-R-U. and and KRU and yeah. whatever mm-hmm. you're gonna jitayarisha please yeah uh, the number is two zero two six eight three four five seven zero press star five to press speak star five to but speak. be on standby yes and you can also call you know like to contribute on this conversation about taxes yes, yeah that we're having yes uh, with Benny Hila. doesn't pay taxes yes oh and uh, I think he, I, I don't know his hand is up so I don't know whether we should take him you can take no I think you can you can take the call let's take the call let's take the call if it's called let's take the call yeah I think Uno should tell us you know based upon what Uno found out the last time. I think come away when he clever you carry a tent and you go with a chair yes and have water okay all yes. right that, so that's good information so uh uno momento skype over here let me uh, eh beni wa trata okay uh i mean if it's uh, hold on the, okay. did you see the, the, can you dial a friend call a number uh, uh, yeah and, no. and 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 while we're there waiting, he goes hey. okay all right go ahead beni Thank you for calling the One Mic Show. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. And your social security number. And your KRA pin. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think, uh, I think, is, I think is he mem- silent? I'm no, always maybe he's he's scared. No, I think to me, when, we, when you mentioned social security number and KRA pin, Akatuli <laughs> Zaboli. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... And then, uh, and then, uh, Udia Natwambia, can you guys shout out my girl uh, on that day? She will have her Kenyan jersey on. So tell us, tag her, tag who your girl his, is. His, his girl, hmm? okay. Uh, but we, we don't know who it is. Yeah. Ta- tag who your girl is, Udi, so that we know who it is. And we'll shout out, Akinyadoyo Karibu Sana. Now, when I go back to the tax conversation, of mm-hmm. course, we're going to come back to rugby later. Uh, and this I want to now come, you know, like uh, to Hila and also back to the panel. What are maybe some areas that uh, diasporans are investing in Kenya generally that have tax implications? Hila, I'm going to start with you because you're in Kenya and you're seeing where diasporans are coming and throwing their money. Which sectors uh, are you seeing diasporans investing in? Hila. All right. So the remittance from diaspora, if you look at the most recent data by the National Bureau of Statistics says that close to about 500,000 Kenyans in diaspora remit up to 667 billion annually. 667 billion Kenyan shillings. Wow. To place that into context, the most recent budget that was read yesterday uh, projects that we should be utilizing 4 trillion. So 667 billion was to be placed as a percentage of the four trillion, that's 17%. So 17% is almost close to a fifth of what the country's current expenditure or projected expenditure is. So it's not a small pittance when you're looking at what uh, the remittances back home are. Now, the issues that have you know popped up within the last uh, 12, 18 months. Previously, agriculture was an area where there'd be a lot of focus 
but the input cost, the cost of a little fuel, just being able to get your produce from the farm to the formal markets has made it a very tough venture. And I know people who, you know, have decided for a reason or the other to keep away from agriculture because it will be an issue of fertilizer. You don't get the correct fertilizer. You get fake fertilizer. You will not get any subsidies on that. You will be hit on a fuel perspective, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, the list is endless. If you're an animal husbandry, the cost of feeds has more than tripled within the last three years. So agriculture has become a very dicey bit. Unless you have the ability to produce your own feeds for your animals or you've got some ingenuity on utilizing organic uh, manure, uh, it may not necessarily be something that is worthwhile. But there's still those who believe and take a leap of faith. So that is an area because at the end of the day, you'll still require to get people to be fed, but there are various challenges. Now, tourism within the last two years post-COVID has actually had a very, very tremendous growth of about 20, 29%. And uh, whereas maybe 10 years ago, everyone would be looking at living in hotels and resorts, people are now looking at getting into Airbnbs and, you know, um, opportunities to perhaps be able to go around and get in a flat in a place like Mombasa, Kuala, Kilifi, and even Nairobi would be able to go around and at least allow you to have uh, something that will increase in its value and also be able to generate a bit of revenue. So at this point in time, if you're to go around and look at some place where you can, you know, try and see something that you can do without necessarily having a risk, because taxation will still get you everywhere. I would say real estate, particularly focusing on short-term stays uh, within the various uh, tourist hubs around in Kenya would definitely be a bet to move on through. Business, the, the, the business environment at home is tough. So, you know, if you actually have, you know, the nil and I'm, and I say this with a lot of respect, if you do not actually have uh, the ability to uh, snuggle it all through, you'll uh, you'll be heartbroken very quickly. What do you mean by snuggle it all through? Uh, as in, like, stay for the long term? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's quite interesting. Um, I mean, this is uh, this is mind blowing. <laughs>